Look, I get it. Every week, there's a new AI coding tool promising to revolutionize how we build. But when Claude Code releases an update, like they did last week with version 2.0, I think it's worth a look, especially if you're a daily Claude Code user like I am. But here's the thing. We're professional builders building real products for real customers. And just because something is new doesn't mean that it automatically deserves a place in our workflow. What matters is whether these updates actually help us do our best work day to day when we're deep in a code base at 3 p.m. on a Tuesday. So that's what I care about. Not the hype, not the flashy demos. And I'm not just gonna read the docs to you. I wanna show you what I think is actually useful in the new Claude Code 2.0. So that's what we'll get into in this video. I'll give you my first impressions of Claude's new Sonnet 4.5 model when it comes to coding. We'll look at the new VS Code extension for Claude Code, which I might use in cursor, but I'll tell you why I'm not quite sure about that. And I'll show you the three new features in Claude Code 2.0 that already fit perfectly with my daily workflow. Now, if you're serious about staying ahead of the curve when it comes to building with AI, then I'd like you to join my free builder briefing. It's a five minute read that I send every Friday to help you stay sharp with AI first development. No fluff, just practical insights. You can get yours by going to buildermethods.com. And subscribers will be the first to find out about my next live workshop, which is happening here in October on the topic of spec-driven development with Agent OS. And I just dropped the 2.0 version of that too. So you can get all of that by going to buildermethods.com. So last week, Anthropic made this announcement. They dropped a bunch of new stuff all at the same time, including an all new model, Claude Sonnet 4.5. Now, my first impressions of Sonnet 4.5 are you know, mostly pretty good. But you know, I gotta be honest, at this point, all the latest models are really good and I'm having a hard time really trying to figure out which ones are actually better or worse than the others. Right now, here in October of 2025, I'm regularly switching between Claude's Sonnet 4.5, uh, Claude's Opus, and OpenAI's ChatGPT 5. And actually, I just did another video showing uh, OpenAI's Codex CLI product where they have a GPT-5 codex, which works really well there. But for me, the only practical point of comparison is when I actually notice a model making mistakes, which is pretty rare these days. And in my about a week now of using Sonnet every day, I haven't really noticed it making any glaring mistakes. I have noticed that it's quite a bit faster at executing than Opus. And there's a toggle switch, I'll get into that in just a minute. Um, I guess the only thing that we really have to go on out of the gate are these pretty graphs that the companies release whenever they release a new model. Of course, they always make their latest, greatest model just a little bit better than all the rest. Um, but according to this, you know, Sonnet 4.5 is supposedly uh, a little bit better than uh, Claude's Opus 4.1. And, you know, of course, they compare it to the, to the competitors. Every one of these things is probably biased a little bit, but you know, so we can only really go on our own actual day-to-day -day experience with these things. And frankly, across the board, they're all pretty damn good at this point. Now I'm here in cursor and I'm going to uh, fire up Claude. So as of today, I'm on Claude code version 2.0.5. It defaults to the new Sonnet 4.5 model. Looks like they have a cleaner, simpler mascot now. Now, one thing I thought was interesting is this new toggle. So if I just hit tab, we can switch between thinking on and thinking off. I think that's a toggle just for the Sonnet 4.5 model. So of course, with thinking on, it goes a little bit slower. It's gonna think more about its tasks. Uh, with thinking off, it'll work a little bit faster. I have noticed a little bit of a difference in speed of performance. But again, both modes have worked pretty well, but of course you'll wanna have thinking on when you're doing more complex work. Now I am looking at Claude code here in the terminal within cursor. Uh, but Claude Code also just announced a VS Code extension. And of course, VS Code extensions work when you're using Cursor because Cursor is a fork of VS Code. Nice. So um, I've already installed that. And what that does is it'll give you this, uh, this Claude button here, which was actually there in the older version of the extension. Um, but now when I click it, and if I close the terminal, now we have this nice sidebar where we can actually use Claude Code here in this like sidebar interface, I must say it is uh, quite a bit nicer to kind of look through each individual code change that's made in this nice interface compared to, uh, you know, what we have, you know, here in the terminal interface. So when I started looking at this last week, I thought this was great. I thought I'm gonna start to use Claude code every day 
in the sidebar interface. Um, it's just nicer to, to work with. But I found one downside. As of today, at least, we can't use Claude code in the extensions sidebar in the uh, dangerously accept permissions mode. So if you're not familiar with that, it's this flag that you can run when you start up Claude code. Uh, so, you know, you would do something like this. And what I usually do to start up Claude code is this mode because, you know, it just doesn't bug me about asking my permission for every little thing. Uh, everyone has a, sort of a different preference on that. Um, in fact, I even put it into a, uh, an, a terminal alias. So whenever I start up Claude code in the terminal, I just go Claude YOLO. And then we have this uh, bypass permissions on. Unfortunately, as of today, the sidebar Claude code or the Claude code extension does not have access to that option. I was just uh, searching around for this. I see a couple of um, you know issues pulled up on the uh, Claude code project on GitHub. Looks like there's uh, you know quite a bit of uh, people who are asking for this. So I'm hoping that this is something that you know Anthropic is gonna is gonna patch pretty soon and, and get that get that working in Claude code. Once they do, I would probably start using this a lot more. Uh, but for now, I am gonna stick to using Claude code in the terminal. You know, it works well enough. All right, so now let me get into three new features in Claude Code 2.0, which really caught my attention because they already fit the way that I want to use Claude Code every day. So actually back in July of the summer, uh, around the time that Claude Code had launched their new weekly limits, which you know weren't great, but I, what I tweeted at the time was that Claude Code adding weekly limits doesn't really bother me. Products with high demand, they change limits all the time. But what doesn't sit right with me was the lack of transparency on what the limits actually are. You know, let customers actually know what they're buying so that they can dial in their usage accordingly. Well, Claude Code 2.0 just launched the usage command and I can pull that up and it gives you this nice little graph that tells me in the current session how much I've used, where I'm at on my weekly limit across all models and then where I'm at on the Opus limit. So as you can see uh, this week, I was using Opus quite a bit to help me write the, the docs for the new Agent OS 2.0, which I'm launching uh, today or tomorrow, hopefully. Um, so I'm near the limit on that one. And what's also nice about this view is that, you know, it actually tells me uh, when the current session is going to end. That's the other thing. Like before we had this view here, I was always left wondering, you know, I know that I'm eating up my my limit, but I don't know how far into my allowance I'm at. And also, I, I know that it's a five-hour window, and there's also the weekly window, but I never know exactly when I started this morning, so I don't know exactly what time um, we're coming up on the end of the window. And actually, right now, as I record this, it looks like I'm about four minutes away from the reset, so that's pretty cool. So I could see myself pulling up that usage graph uh, pretty regularly. All right, the next new feature in Claude Code 2.0 that's getting a lot of attention, and rightly so, is the rewind feature. So I just pulled up a previous conversation using the resume command, and that um, that takes me into this conversation where uh, you know I made a bunch of changes uh, to the current code base. And what that does is it gives me a little list, sort of like a map of this entire uh, conversation, and it gives me these little checkpoints. So here's a point in this conversation where I made a bunch of edits to eight different files. And then here's another checkpoint in the same conversation where uh, I made a bunch of other changes as well. So I can go back to any of these, and then it's gonna ask me, do I wanna restore the code and the conversation, or just the conversation, or just the code? Now before 2.0, we did have the option to go back to a certain point in the conversation, but now we can actually restore the state of the code base, like literally undoing the code changes that Claude Code made earlier in the conversation. So that's what this is. This is essentially an undo function, which is something that actually happens in practice quite a bit. When I'm working with Claude Code to make some fixes and it doesn't quite do something the way that I wanted to, or we explored one direction, but now we need to backtrack a little bit, up until today, I was literally typing into Claude Code to say, undo what you just did, let's go back and rework this. And then I would ask it to undo it, I would watch it do that. But now we can literally you know, restore the code and the conversation, and now it's actually gonna go back to the state of the code base at that point. Now there are a few caveats to this when you're using the checkpointing feature, you know, that rewind command. If I scroll down to um, limitations. So first of all, if you're using bash to change any files, or if you personally make any code changes yourself, when you rewind, 
it won't actually roll back your own code changes. It's only gonna roll back the changes that the Claude code agent actually made in your code base. And that's a really interesting product limitation when you think about it. You know, because I like to think about how our products and our tools influence the way that we build. And in this sense, if we find ourselves wanting to use that rewind feature, the checkpoints feature, and going back and reverting changes, then that's going to push us further away from the notion of me wanting to go touch the code myself. And I'm gonna rely even more heavily on having Claude code make my code changes for me. Now that's already a trend that's been happening in my daily workflow for well over uh, the past year and especially now. So I would say most of the time I'm using spec-driven development, using Agent OS, which is all happening in Markdown files, a lot of it generated by Claude Code itself. And then I'm having Claude Code implement my specs and all of that is having the agent, Claude Code, and the sub-agents actually write the code. So I'm still not really touching the code too much, which means that my code base is in a safe state that is ready to be rewound, if you will. It's only after that, as, as like the final polish, that's usually when I go in and I start to tweak things myself, maybe tweak some colors and UI and styling and markup and maybe go into the, into the actual logic myself. So it's interesting to see how our tools like Claude Code and this checkpointing feature can influence us to be even more AI first when it comes to actually implementing code. All right, the third new feature in Claude Code 2.0 that I'm gonna find really useful is actually the ability to search through past prompts. So I can do Control R, and that's gonna bring up this search prompts, and I can just you know type in anything, and this is really good for pulling up those longer prompts that I spent a lot of time just typing or, or drafting, usually they're they're earlier on in my conversation, you know, like way up near the top of a conversation. I believe you can search through all of your prompts across a bunch of recent uh, conversations, which is really helpful. But what's actually really useful about this is in those cases where I have a really long running conversation and I'm starting to see the notification down here that I'm running low on space in the current context window, that's when I would typically like to use the compact command, which you know uh, summarizes the current conversation and almost starts a new one, but lets me continue on with some, while bringing in a, some detail from the previous conversation. But rather than letting Claude Code just automatically assume that it can write its own summary, I usually like to you know add in a little bit of, of detail to sort of pass along from, one version of the conversation into the compacted version. So that could be really useful to do something like control R to find a, a recent uh, prompt where I you know, spent a lot of time hashing out a lot of details, which I don't wanna get lost after I compact the conversation. And you know, assuming I'm I'm in like a really long conversation, then you know I can just do uh, compact, and then I would just paste in you know all of those additional details that I just pulled up from the search. That can also be useful if I'm switching between Claude Code and Codex or Claude Code and you know Cursor's uh, agent over here, where I want to sort of copy a prompt that I used earlier in this conversation in one coding agent and paste it into another coding agent, um, especially if I wanna do sort of like two things at once using two different agents, which I do from time to time. Now, again, the reason why you would wanna compact the conversation from time to time is so that you can manage that context window that you're working with in Claude Code. Or as I like to think of it, you're managing Claude Code's short-term memory. Now, context management is one of those power moves that professional builders are using when they're building with AI. So if you wanna get into that, then check out my video on how to solve Claude Code's short-term memory problem. So right after you hit subscribe on the channel, I'll see you over there next. Let's keep building.